Can I, can I have your attention? If anybody wishes to speak in under citizens with clearance and comments, please come up and sign your name in the book. Thank you. Goulet, Thailand. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, August 3rd, 2015 regular meeting. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Trustee Brady. Here. Trustee Hine. Here. Trustee Vito. Here. Trustee Kruger. Present. Trustee Vogel. Here. Trustee Lang. Here. President Argeris. Here. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the regular meeting of July 6, 2015. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kruger. Second. Second by Trustee Hine. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Abstain. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Argeris? Yes. Any changes to the agenda? None this evening. Thank you. Citizens, concerns, and comments? Uh, there are none, Mr. President. Thank you. No staff reports. Uh, consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Village Board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. Thank you. Any concerns, questions? Entertain a motion. I'll move. Second. Motion by Trustee Lang, was it? Yes. Second by Trustee Brady. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Jarris? Yes. 13A, there are two ordinances, Madam Clerk. I read them both at the same time? Sure. Um, A1, ordinance amending Title 16 Plumbing Code, Chapter 16. Point, dot, point one, plumbing code to add a new section 16.1-2, Water Sense Products and Amending Title 13, Water and Sewers, Chapter 13.04, Water Connection and Use, Section 13.04.280, Non-Essential Use Restrictions of the Wheeling Municipal Code Relating to Water Conservation Issues. Ordinance A2 is amending various sections of Title 13, Water and Sewers, Chapter 13.04, Water Connections and Use of the Wheeling Village Code relating to backflow prevention devices, cross connections, and inspection of meters. Thank you. Manager Svendels. Thank you. Uh, each of these two items tonight deal with requirements, new requirements from the state uh, with regard to our existing code and changes that we are required to make. So a lot of this is, is necessity, but by way of explanation, um, item 13A1 deals mostly with, uh, well, the effect will come mostly with the way the villages the village handles its lawn sprinkling ordinance. Um, currently, we have a time frame that allows residents to water, it's a water ban, to water within a certain amount of time, which keeps uh, water from being wasted by watering during peak hours. Uh, this requirement, um, which is statewide, there's a little bit of, of option here, but what it's trying to do is unify the way all communities manage their water ban program, and ultimately what we are suggesting in order to comply with the new regulations is that we simply go with an even odd system. That means that if your address ends in an even number, you can only water during calendar dates that end in an even number. If your address ends in an odd number, same thing, you can only water during the days where um, the date ends in an odd number. So from an effect standpoint, that is the biggest effect of this code change. Uh, we will do all the necessary publication of that information. There are still, of course, times that uh, are allowed and not with, with this new change. Uh, but we'll make sure that we publicize, get in the newsletter, make sure that everyone understands exactly what the new requirements are. Uh, the second ordinance deals mostly with uh, backflow preventers. Uh, again, these are technicalities that the state is requiring uh, within our code. Um, there are a multitude of, of changes, but ultimately, uh, it it is about annual testing of backflow prevention devices and cross-connection surveys. Um, we have staff available to answer any detailed questions if you'd like, but both of these come from the IEPA. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Wolfgang. 
want to come up here? You want to add anything to the backflow stuff that we just talked about? Or maybe just stand up here in case somebody has a question for you. Thanks. Um, of course. Uh, Trustee Lane. Jeff, um, can you give some examples of some of the backflow that residents may have? Because, you know, they ask a plumber to come over and do something. They might not even know something like that's installed. Right. The majority of the uh, backflow prevention is that's on residential houses is for irrigation systems. So they'll, they're required to be tested every year. Are they in uh, sump pumps at all or like basements? No, or? They're, they're for irrigation systems. They're located um, on the outside of the house. And then they're winterized and they come in in the wintertime. Okay, so something that people would pretty they'd much know, know that yeah, they'd have that. They'd know. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Brady. Thank you. <clears throat> this uh, label that they're saying everything has to have <laughs> on it, is that a, a federal agency, a company, or, or something similar to... Uh, uh, you know, you will? No, the water sense label is uh, for, it's to preserve water. Um, plumbing fixtures, the shower heads, low flow toilets, things like that need to be um, labeled now, showing that we're making attempts to conserve water. So the, the owners or the manufacturers of these, this equipment put their own label on there? Yeah, every, every manufacturer has, has water sense products now. Because I've had, you know, some time through the years, and bought different products that did all are supposed to be water savers and everything. They're not. Best yeah. difference. You know. Yeah, now they're they're uh, required to. Yeah, well, there was one other thing too that I was going to say. Uh, second part of this was what, John? The, uh, water the water restrictions, the water ban? What was the first part and the second part? Oh, that the, what you're the days, the days. Am yeah, I to well. take it now that the uh, uh, 12 noon to 6 p.m. is out? We just water. Uh, days and even days? No, that still remains. It's that, in addition to that, it's going to go to an even odd system. Correct. So the time restriction remains the same. It's the same, correct? It's the same. It's just that you, in addition to that, you can only water if your address ends in an even number on even calendar days. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Entertain a motion for 13A1. So move. Second. second. Motion by Trustee Hines, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Juris? Yes. Any questions for 13A2? If not, I entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Vogel? Second. Second, Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Juris? Yes. 13B? 13B, um, resolution authorizing, I'm sorry, authorizing the village president and village clerk to execute an agreement between the village of Wheeling and the state of Illinois for the improvement of Illinois Route 68, which is Dundee Road. Thank you. Andrew Fentels. Thank you. This is definitely good news, something we've been talking about for quite some time. It is one of the scheduled improvements for Dundee Road. Uh, specifically, uh, this authorization with the state will allow for Dundee Road to receive a right turn lane for traffic turning southbound onto Elmhurst Road from eastbound Dundee Road and Elmhurst Road to receive a right turn lane for traffic turning westbound onto Dundee Road from southbound Elmhurst Road. Both of these have been discussed uh, in the past and are certainly uh, excellent additions to help us mitigate as much of the traffic congestion as possible. And again, this is one of a number of improvements to Dundee Road that is planned by the state. Uh, this one is the first of those and requires your approval. Thank you. Questions? Trustee Brady. Yeah, I, I see there's probably a need for this here, especially the, the one to uh, southbound 83. Uh, but I kind of question the one going uh, westbound uh, uh, Dundee Road. Uh, you know, once you're that far south, the traffic usually eases up when you're going west, especially during, during rush hour. But I would say that one that's even more important and probably should have been a prioritized in, before this is the one going on to Old McHenry from, from uh, westbound Dundee. We absolutely concur. Uh, there are issues with the landowner in order to get the easement to uh, do that construction. 
Um, but in staff's opinion, you are absolutely correct. From a prioritization standpoint, that one should come first. We are still hopeful that that project will happen next year and will happen at the same time as this project. However, right now, it's just not ready to be let. We don't want to turn down any gifts, so. <laughs> Anybody else? Trustee Vogel? So do we know, they said it might start in spring of 16. Do we know the length of the project? I do not, Christine or John. No, I, I don't recall off the top of my head. I'm sure it's going to be at least a three-month project and probably longer would be my guess. Okay. Thank you. That's another reason we're hopeful that the McHenry Road project happens next year so that if Dundee Road is going to be a mess, uh, it's a mess all at one time. We're also hoping that next year construction of the Community Boulevard intersection is underway as well. Okay. I got a question. Uh, what are some of the ramifications of some of the existing businesses that would be affected there, like the 66 gas station or the old Arby's restaurant and stuff? Well, the, <clears throat> the driveways uh, at the gas station um, will be rehabbed. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure you're well aware that some of those driveways are very close to the intersection and probably shouldn't be there anyhow. They're very much a safety hazard. So when IDOT comes through and, and revamps these right turn lanes, they will be uh, eliminating uh, some of the access points. Will they still have access off of 83 into that gas station? Yes. They will, especially where the car wash is? Yes. That area there? Okay. Okay, that was the question I had. All right, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Lang, second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Prisoner Juris? Yes. 13C. Authorizing change order number one to the construction contract with Monday Construction for the 2015 Sidewalk Removal and Replacement Program. Thank you. Assistance Public Works Director Christine Bezier. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, step Staff is requesting approval of change order number one in the amount of $30,000. The contract price incorporating this change would be a total of $68,449.75. Um, this change order allows for additional sidewalks, uh, a sidewalk installation uh, at locations where the water main project uh, is currently being performed, which is Sherwood Drive, 6th Street, 7th Street, and Glendale. Um, these sidewalks are identified for replacement in the future, but staff wanted to take the opportunity as well as favorable costs to replace the sidewalks in these particular areas um, now during the <coughs> construction rather than having <coughs> residents uh, undergo the construction again in the next couple of years. Uh, funding is available in the Capital Improvement Fund. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Before I entertain a motion, the motion is to waive, also to waive bidding and to authorize the change order number one to the construction contract with Monte Construction for the 2015 sidewalk removal and replacement program. That being said, is because it exceeds the 50% amount of the original contract and we're waiving competitive bidding. Otherwise, we have to go out and bid it again. So that being said, I'd be entertaining a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Vogel. Second. Second by Trustee Hine. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Prisoner Juris? Yes. Thank you. 13D? Ordinance de declaring as surplus and authorizing the disposition of personal property owned by the Village of Wheeling currently being stored at 77 West Hiss Road. Thank you. Managers fund those. Thank you. There are a number of items that are currently being stored uh, on the second floor space at Public Works um, that staff has collected over the years, um, particularly from building remodels and just Public Works has kind of become the depository of, of everything historical and we like to save uh, a number of items. Um, several of them have been identified as having uh, value to the historical society. Uh, this ordinance allows the village to donate those items to the historical society. And to be clear, uh, these items have no cash value, no material value of any kind. They are photographs, an old wooden ladder that used to be used from the volunteer fire department, uh, some plaques that hung in the old boardroom, and a couple of 
pieces of local art that hung in the old village hall. Uh, again, we, we really can't throw them away without appropriately um, uh, disposing of them through ordinance, and in particular, in this case, we cannot give them away without uh, the same legislation. They have no material value. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. President. Trustee uh, High. Being the president of the William Historical Society, I will be abstaining. Thank you. Anybody else? So moved. Motion by Trustee Lang. Second. Second by Trustee Brady. Roll call. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hang? Abstain. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? <coughs> yes. Uh, President Archer? Yes. Thank you. And flying by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Official communication. Trustee Vo uh, Vito, let's start with you. Um, well, I disagree with uh, Manager Svondelis. There's a plaque in there that has Bill Hines' name on it from 1980. That is a lot of material value. <laughs> um, I was one year old, no by comment. the way, Mr. Trustee Hines. <clears throat> um, no, nothing. Uh, last night was a great night out uh, rocking with the cops. Uh, my kids had a blast. I think everybody here had a good time. And uh, unfortunately, the, the lightning came through, but they moved it indoors. And my kids uh, still had a blast. And a lot of people were hanging out for a long time indoors. So it was a good event. Thanks. Trustee Brady? Thank you. Yeah, I agree. It, it's always fun when kids show up, especially with police sponsors, stuff like that. And I guess it, it shows that it pays to be luckier than good. So, and we were lucky last night with the way them storms came through. Good job, fellas. Uh, one other thing, too. Uh, Ms. Bajer, uh, could you look into something for me? Uh, when they did that, that uh, uh, interim paving in, in Old Town, you know, the, the strips along the curb, they never finished the uh, the crosswalks or the stop bars uh, in in the areas that had them, and it it, it just kind of looks a little unfinished. Uh, okay. Could you look into seeing if if who was supposed to do that and if we can get it done? Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Jesse Kruger. Um, I'll echo uh, that last night was fun, and I'm glad we got done cooking all that stuff before the lightning scared everybody. Um, Wanted to say that I did get a chance to go to Chicago Executive Airport yesterday and see the uh, old airplanes. And uh, though I did not fly, get to fly this year, it was still really awesome. Um, they had a great turnout. There were a lot of people there in the afternoon, so that was very good. And um, uh, Assistant Director Bezier, I have one for you too. <laughs> uh, the Hints Road project, uh, I, I know I saw some information about it closing down you know, soon or that they'll be finishing up soon. I'm wondering if there are any requirements for them, for the, their uh, contractors to street sweep at all during the project or do they just wait till it's all over? No, no we'll, we'll look into that, we're not sure. The reason I ask is that I drive it every day, no matter, I don't care that there's construction, I, I drive through it every day anyway and I've noticed some rocks getting spun out of people's cars and hitting mine <laughs> or, or others. And I just wonder, do they sweep it when they change lanes or you know, lane configurations? Maybe they run a street sweeper through there or something. Cause Regardless of the contract, which we're not sure on, we can certainly make that request of them. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Vogel? Uh, the only thing is well, maybe we could uh, write into that donation to the Historical Society. A uh, guarantee that uh, Mr. Hine will not attempt to use that ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Probably used it before. Be That's good. all. Okay. Jim, can you take care of that? I will. Thank I've you. Started it already. Speaking of Mr. Hine, you're up next. <laughs> Thank Mr. you, Mr. Hine. Um, there are a couple of items that would be being donated to the society that uh, we will be looking to preview over at our museum, so anybody would like to stop by and see those, we'll have them into effect in a very short period of time. And uh, we're at the museum every every Sunday, say from two to four, except for holidays, so come on, stop by and see the new artifacts. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Lang. Thank you. Uh, to uh, tap on to uh, what Trustee Kruger was saying, there was a uh, a great event at the airport this weekend. The uh, World War II bombers and a uh, P-51 uh, fighter was in uh, town annually. They come in with the Collins Foundation. 
and a uh, great event. It, uh, this year topped um, previous events. We had 1,200 paid folks come in to view the planes. I'm not sure how many actually flew in them. Uh, that was an extra uh, larger fee. But uh, having 1,200 people come out, this is definitely one of the stops' uh, biggest draws. And it's uh, nice to see. It's a, uh, another opportunity for people to come out and be on the airport grounds and appreciate it a little bit more. Um, not to mention all the people that just looked at the planes from behind the fence. There were probably twice as many at that point. But a uh, great weekend for it, and uh, they left this morning. So we'll have them here next year. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk Simpson. Tomorrow night is National Night Out 2015. National Night Out is an event to promote police community partnerships to fight crime, drugs, and violence, and promote neighborhood unity. An expected 34 million people in more than 10,000 communities across the nation will join forces on Tuesday, August 4th. National Night Out is designed to heighten crime and drug prevention awareness, generate support for and participation in local anti-crime programs, strengthen, strengthen neighborhood spirit and police community partnerships, send a message to criminals letting them know that neighborhoods are organized and fighting back. Along with the traditional display of outdoor lights and front porch vigils, our communities such as Arlington Club subdivision, Lakeside Villa subdivision, Sand Pebble Walk, and Tahoe Village will celebrate with block parties, hookouts, visit from the police, fire department, and elected officials. Police and fire department visits start at 6 p.m. and will continue until 9 p.m., allowing about 15 to 20 minutes in each neighborhood. Thank you. Manager Svendos? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Good. Chris, I'll add something to your list. Give you something else to do. It's time for IDOT to get a phone call regarding Palatine Road. The weeds, the grass, I mean, it's trying to get on Palatine Road off of Wolf Road there, off the ramp there is becoming more and more dangerous because you're blindsided by the vegetation. They're not being trimmed. I mean, we went through this last year. Correct. We actually, um, because I noticed it as well coming up from where I reside at, and we actually contacted IDOT on Thursday in regards to um, removing some of those weeds. And um, I haven't noticed it yet, but um, I'll follow up with Lori. Uh, we put the phone call in on Thursday. Great. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Great time last night. Uh, tell officer, uh, prevention officer, Kanchis, did I say it right? Yes, Chris Kanchis. Chris did a nice job. Uh, we had a fireworks show with the lightning. I mean, that was a, an extra bonus. And uh, I could still taste the burgers, and my eyes are still foggy from cooking those burgers, but it was fun, and it was a great turnout, you know, even with the threat of weather there. And so it was nice to see everybody there and, and the officers there, and, and plus from the fire department showed up too. That was also new. really nice. Our next meeting is going to be on August 17th, and then following up with a workshop meeting on August 24th. <coughs> and I assure you that the August 24th meeting should be a busy night with some of the items that the manager and I have been talking about that we're finally getting together here so we can discuss as a group here. That's all I have. And uh, we do have executive session this evening for the reasons of pending probable and or imminent litigation and the purchase of lease of real property for the use of the village. I entertain a motion. So move. Motion by Trustee Lang. Second. Second, Second by Trustee Vito. Roll call, please. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Fogo? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. President Juris? Yes. We'll go into executive session at 7.05. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.